Hi everyone. I'll get started in a few seconds. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the eighth episode of Sarah's Science-Based Sustainability Secrets. I am so glad you can all watch me at Hudson Gardens. It's really beautiful. And before I get started, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and say that I am interning with CSU Extension this summer and my major is ecosystem science and sustainability. So I have a passion for sustainability and learning and I'm really happy to be doing this mini series. And so CSU Extension is the outreach branch of Colorado State University and we have an office in almost every county in Colorado. And our job is to provide research-based information to the community. And all the content for today's presentation are from CSU Extension fact sheets, and it will be posted in the comments below. So today's episode is on urban trees. And last week's episode was on fossil fuels. And I really think the two go hand in hand because trees fight, absorb pollutants, and they also remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through photosynthesis and they bring us oxygen and as a byproduct and about half the greenhouse gases are caused by carbon dioxide and i showed a pie chart last week showing this uh, act as a uh oh i think i'm losing okay i think the connection is back on so sorry um where was I? Oh, I saw. Okay. Trees can act as a carbon sink by removing carbon and storing it in the trunk, in the branches, and in the leaves and the roots. And trees also remove other air pollutants such as sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, ozone, and, you know, carbon monoxide, and a lot of particulate matter. So it's really good for our lungs, the trees, and also economically. Trees are one of the few assets that appreciate in value. So in a study done by the USDA Forest Service, they found that the 16,000 street trees in Fort Collins, Colorado, contribute about $2.2 million in environmental benefits. And the community forest has many important benefits, you know, by savings through heating and cooling and you know carbon dioxide and all the other pollutants and they also found in that same study that um, for each dollar that a city invests in a community tree program large trees return one dollar and 92 cents to the community small trees return one dollar and 30 medium trees return one dollar and 36 cents to the community and small trees return one dollar to the community and urban and community forestry can make a difference in our lives because they reduce the noise levels and the summer summer temperatures in the city and trees add natural character to our cities and towns and they also provide shelter for wildlife and they also provide us with colors and pretty flowers. And they also um, can deeply impact our moods and emotions and provide a lot of psychological benefits trees. And urban forests can also protect our water. And during a main major rainstorm, trees intercept the rain on their leaves, branches and trunks, and thereby they can reduce stormwater runoff. And this is because they prevent the stormwater from reaching the ground. And for example, uh, the tree cover in Boulder reduces stormwater runoff by approximately 422 million gallons valued at $5.58 million. So for every 5% of tree cover that is added to a community, this reduces stormwater runoff by 2%.
And trees also reduce topsoil erosion, prevent the land pollutants from getting into our soils and ensure that our groundwater supplies are constantly being replenished. And so also, I talked about this a bit last week, but urban forests can also save energy. They can lower the local air temperatures. And according to a Boulder, Colorado government, it can be six to 19 degrees colder uh, under a tree canopy during the summer months. And I can definitely agree with that because it is much nicer under the shade here than it is in the direct sun. And because they lower these air temperatures, they can cool off summer buildings. They can also um, keep your houses warmer in the winter by blocking the winter winds. And this can reduce your energy bills. And and a lot of this I talked about in, la in episode six. So if you want to learn more about landscaping for energy use and energy savings, check out episode six. And next, I will be talking about how to successfully plant a tree. As although these trees are beautiful and they benefit urban life, it is a hard life for a tree out here in the urban lifestyle. So the science of planting trees is aimed at promoting rapid root growth or regeneration to quickly reduce the water stress that is imposed by the harvest and the planting process. So post planting stress is called transplant shock. Planting trees too deeply has become an issue for a lot of urban trees. And planting trees too deeply into the root ball is the is 57% of the deaths in urban trees. And I will link some extension fact sheets below on how to figure out the depth for planting trees in your backyard or in the neighborhood. And with good planting and you know good techniques, we can and good soil conditions, the establishment phase takes one growing season per inch of trunk diameter. So a one inch caliper tree typically takes one year for roots to establish, but a two inch diameter tree typically takes two years. And on small trees up to four inches in diameter, the trunk diameter will be measured from six inches above the soil line. And with poor planting techniques and poor soil conditions, an urban tree may never truly establish and might just slowly die off in the years to come. Um, a significant increase in annual twig growth indicates that the roots have established and the tree is shifting into the growth phase. So next, we should talk about tree care during the establishment phase. And this, the most important thing is regular irrigation. So regular irrigation after planting encourages rapid root development for tree establishment. And under irrigation will often lead to slow establishment or your tree may not even establish at all. And this can lead to bark splits or canopy dieback. And after the first couple of years, it is important to keep watering and because under irrigated trees it is common to see that they have minimal root growth and larger volumes of water that are applied infrequently will not compensate for the need for infrequent shorter light irrigation and on newly planted trees soil amendments do not significantly reduce the need for frequent irrigation and drought to drought tolerant species do not become drought tolerant until the root systems have become established. And so since I'm at Hudson Gardens, I can show you some of the trees, let me flip this, uh, some of the trees around here. And the next thing to talk about is wood and bark mulch, which is highly recommended on newly planted trees. So the mulch protects the tree from the lawn mower and weed eater injury. And trees with a mulch ring typically have 20% more early growth and compared to trees that have grass too close to the trunk of the tree. And mulch also holds in moisture longer. And so as you can see, some of these mulch rings are pretty wide. And so in the landscape setting, the mulch ring is typically two to four feet wide up to the width of the drip line, which is the spread of the branches. And wood chip mulch, you should put at a level of three to four inches, which gives you weed control and prevents soil compaction by feet. And also with establishing trees, when you first establish it during the beginning phases, fertilization needs are minimal on woody plants. 
and um, also pruning is not recommended for trees that you are first establishing because this reduces the levels of auxin in the tree, which is a hormone that stimulates root growth. And so next, we should talk about landscape design and when and how you, you know, you know, how do you decide where you want to put a tree? And it all depends on what the purpose of the tree is. And so you can place trees as specimens, group plantings, or mass plantings. So it all depends on how many trees you want to plant in your landscape. And the spreading branches of trees create a canopy, canopy that forms a ceiling for the outdoor room. And because we sp spend a lot of time indoors, people are really comfortable with the outdoor ceiling effect. And tree placement, like I've just been talking about a little bit, can have a significant role in your energy conservation. And summer shade on the south and west facing windows can provide the summer cooling that you're looking for. And I talk about this more in episode six. And so once a tree is established, they need routine irrigation and care to stay healthy and strong. So it is a myth that trees only need the irrigation from your sprinkler system that waters your lawn. Uh, mature, ne mature trees need year-round deep but infrequent watering separate from your sprinkler system. And so, for instance, in the fall and winter months, trees need a deep watering about once per month. And any time we have dry, warm temperatures that, and without precipitation. And a good rule of thumb for watering is 10 gallons of water for every inch of diameter for your tree. So, for example, um, around me I have some 5-inch trees and that would require about 50 gallons of water each time you winter water and you can use this as a rule of thumb. And water should be applied slowly so it can sink deeply into the soil and not run off. And another good, trip, uh, another good tip for taking care of mature trees is to be mindful of the tree roots. So tree roots can grow to be two to three times the height of the tree. So if we look at some of the trees right next to me, you can imagine how wide the tree the roots must spread and keeping a mulch ring around the tree will always benefit the roots so you should also try to keep the as you can see right at this tree um, you can you should try to keep the first six inches around the base of the tree as bare soil and this will prevent the moisture from the mulch from damaging the trunk and help the roots to receive oxygen and if possible you should try to avoid root compaction by um, you know people walking around the mulch you know pressing it down and that kind of thing so avoiding a lot of uh, landscape furniture on the mulch that kind of thing and also so trees have many benefits and it's hard to fit a lot of it into this week's episode just because there are so many and we've put together a whole list of resources to help you get started on planting and caring for trees and it's all about healthy roots and mulching and where to place your trees and I talked about some of the benefits and now it is time for us to provide benefits to our tree and take the best care of our trees as possible and so refer to the CSU extension resources to learn more and also one last thing I've put together a five questions super quick super easy evaluation for these videos to help me learn how I can you know more effectively communicate and hear any other feedback any other things that you recommend I we talk about at CSU Extension and if you wouldn't mind taking it I would greatly appreciate that and thank you for watching this episode if you have any questions about uh, tree growth please leave them in the comments and I will answer them after the video and check out the resources and tune in next week to talk about what CSU is doing to stay sustainable and that will be my finale and let's see what time it is. Big timing. Um, I'll do another pan of Hudson Gardens and you can see uh, the honeybees over there. That's kind of where I'm sitting. And then I'll end the live, but I'll just give a little mini tour. Lots of honeybees.
And thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys next week. Bye.